Today is going to South America. We'll meet the real girl from Ipanema. Also, the mysteries of voodoo and a trip down the Amazon. A special week of Today from South America, starting February 10th. At Sims, you'll never see this word. Because Sims represents at off price over 200 world-famous designer and brand names in men's, women's, and children's clothing. There's never a reason for a sale. You can always buy men's current, nationally advertised $235 suits for $139. Women's $140 designer outfits for $79. At Sims, an educated consumer is our best customer. King presents Money to Go $10 vacation certificates. Get one every time you buy a Whopper, large fries, and medium Pepsi. Save up to $200 per couple on a minimum one-week air hotel package. Get your vacation certificates at Burger King now and... Go, go, go! People Express stops in New York. But our low prices don't. For your special recipes, add the special ingredient. Fresh, all-natural, shredded and grated cheese from Sargento. The Golden Globe Awards, tonight at 11.30 on TV4. A season of dreams ends in a day of frustration for Steve Grogan and the Patriots. The refrigerator and his teammates turn a cold shoulder to the Pats. The story of Super Bowl XX, next on Nightcast. Live from WBZ TV 4. This is Eyewitness News. Nightcast. Good evening, I'm David Whitman. And I'm Casey Kaufman. The Patriots were the Cinderella team of this football season, but the clock struck long before midnight in New Orleans. New England's attack got buried soon after the coin was flipped and never got started again. The game was never really in question. Sad faces along the Pats' sideline indicated the final score was just a formality. For the Bears, it was a day that everything went right, and they proved that they're just as good as they've been saying they are. The Super Bowl XX trophy goes to the Windy City, and New England will have to wait for yet another year. The grand old city of New Orleans is alive with victory celebrations tonight, but the banners are blue and orange, not red and white. Now let's check in now on the more subdued side of town where Jack Williams and Liz Walker are standing by live. Yeah, New Orleans, is, I would say, is not quite the happy place for Patriots fans tonight as it has been at certain other nights of the week. A disappointment is key, that's for sure, but as one person told me today, it was a heck of a Super Bowl except for the game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was talking to some fans tonight, Jack. As a matter of fact, Wayne and Victor from Sharon, Massachusetts, who just got on a plane just today came down here, didn't have tickets, and are getting back on a plane tonight to leave, but they just wanted to be here. I think we can take comfort in the fact that we were here. Bob Lobel is with us. You sound a little hoarse, Elizabeth. I, well, that yeah. first three points, I screamed. <laughs> <laughs> she lost her voice early. The question is here, uh, how could so many people be so wrong? That's yeah. the way it went today. This doesn't do much for the old Norman Vincent Peale theory or the power of positive thinking, but Certainly a lesson in humility dealt the Patriots in the Super Bowl today. The Bears destroying New England 46 to 10. And Bob Newmeyer has all the details of Super Bowl 20. About 10 or 15 years ago, a reporter asked Dallas Cowboy running back Dwayne Thomas if the Super Bowl was the ultimate football game. He said, if it was, would there be one next year? Ultimate game? Well, the National Football League makes us believe this is the greatest thing since the discovery of the Salk vaccine. Because even before the Super Bowl kickoff, it's a show, a Broadway production. On this day, all 19 Super Bowl MVPs were presented with appropriate videos and musical selections from the corresponding years. 
For the Patriot players, it was a chance to reminisce with an old friend, injured wide receiver Darrell Stingley. By the time the men actually got set to play the game, the anticipation seemed so great that the contest could not possibly match the hype, even for neutral observers. But for Patriots fans, hopes were high, especially on the very first series, they worked their favorite play. Sadly, it would be all downhill from here. Next play, Lynn Dawson injured his knee on a sure first down pass. He had to leave the game on a stretcher. And then on the very next play, Stanley Morgan muffed a surefire Tony Eason touchdown pass, and the Pats had to settle for three. But the defense seemed particularly spry, when, especially when Ronnie LePet took Jim McMahon to a trip down Bourbon Street. But the story of this game and of this season would be the Chicago defense. By halftime, the Patriots would manage minus five yards rushing. They would pass the ball for minus 14 yards, and they would make just one first down. And defensive end Richard Dent would be the key man. First, he stripped Tony Eason for one fumble, then Craig James on the next series, as the Bears would quickly cash in 10 points and blow open the ball game. The Bears began such a roll. They were so cocky, so confident, they even tried a refrigerator option play that failed. It would provide a moment of comic relief in the onslaught to come. Soon a 10-3 lead exploded to 20-3. It is difficult to beat the Bears any time, almost impossible to come from behind. Oh, Coach Raymond Berry called on veteran Steve Grogan for the chance, and it would be Grogan who's flipped to Tony Collins, represented the first completion with five minutes to go in the half. Romantics dreamed of a Grogan-led comeback, but that was painfully cut short. Yeah. Yeah. Even on offense, the Chicago Bears scored in every conceivable way. They threw bombs from their own one-yard line. They ran back batted balls for touchdowns. And leave it to the refrigerator himself to put a cap on the entire afternoon. As for the title-starved Monsters of the Midway, their reaction was one of total ecstasy. They had completed a reign of terror, not seen in the National Football League since the days of the Pittsburgh Steel Curtain or Vince Lombardi's Green Bay Packers. And all the Patriots could do was tip their cap. Hello. How are you? Well, pretty sad right now. How do you explain something like this? We got our ass kicked. Plain and simple. Uh, I've never been in a game like that before, and it uh, happened in the Super Bowl. Bad day. Can you possibly say that they were more ready to play today? I guess you have to, you know, look at the score. No, heck no. We, we, we'd have been any more ready to play if they'd had to keep us off the field. We were ready to play the game, and that's just one of those things. We didn't do our job today. They beat us. So it was execution rather than preparation? Total, totally. We knew what we were doing out there. They did not bring us anything differently. We just did not take care of our business. You know, uh, you can't believe uh, our offensive team on a professional level goes in with minus yards at halftime. That's ridiculous. We really tried to change the personality of our team in one week as far as our offense. And uh, I don't think we're ready to uh, Excuse me? really challenge the Bears the way they need to be challenged, and that's with a quick passing game. I'm not embarrassed. I don't know what everybody else thinks. Maybe, maybe the people in New England will be embarrassed. I, I'm proud of this football team, the things it did this year, and the way it fought till the very end of day. I don't think there's any reason for anybody to hang their head and be embarrassed. It's pretty high on the old disappointment list. Huh? Yeah, I'd say it's ranks right up there. <laughs>